Hello, this is Sir Stillwater. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the other Bronze Age building, the Tower of Babel. Uh, similar to the Zeus, these are both Bronze Age era, and they require Bronze Age goods to to begin, in addition to their blueprints, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. So first off, I'll show you a little picture here, Tower of Babel. Uh, I have one here in my uh, demo village that I have, if you will. And this is what it's going to look like. It's a four by four, as I mentioned. I will go ahead and close this and show you what it looks like placed. Here it is down here in the middle. It always has this like perpetual construction piece going on at the top, which is kind of interesting. So let me go ahead and jump on over and tell you more about it. So again, I'm over here at the Forge Vampire Wiki over at forgevampires.fandom.com. I have no affiliation to this site. Uh, or Forge of Empires, really, outside of the fact that I play the game and I use the site for reference and research and so on. But um, that said, let's go ahead and talk about the Tower of Babel. So Tower of Babel, as I mentioned, is the other of the two Bronze Age buildings. It does have a cost to place in addition to its nine blueprints, and those will be 50 stone, 10 lumber, uh, let's see, 20 marble, 20 dye, and 50 wine. So a little, little more costly than a Zeus, but it's also a little bit bigger than a Zeus. This is a 4x4, four four, whereas the Zeus is a 2x3 uh, for the footprint. So a road is required, as I said in all my other videos. I think it's required on every great building. I don't know of any that aren't. Um, well, maybe there will be. Maybe I'll get to one eventually. But as far as I know, they're required. So let's see. For, I'm going to speak to the early ages here. Okay, so the early, uh, the, excuse me, the, yeah, the early eras or ages. Um, let's see, it gives some properties, the properties that it offers, the, the rewards, if you will. It's going to give you goods production, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, and population boost. So when the population boost is going to be 24-7, it's just, it is a boost similar to the attack boost of the Zeus, that it just is a boost, it is what it is. Uh, however, the goods production is a 24-hour collection uh, cycle similar to the supplies that we had in the Oracle as the previous building that we spoke of. So to show the different level contributions, again, level zero, you get nothing, but it just takes up space. You don't get any rewards or boost at that point. With 40 FP con contributed to unlock level one, it will give a, a, per, a population boost of 90 and a bonus of goods production of six per day. So let's go ahead and break those down. So the 90 population is basically, it's just as if you had other, um, you know, coin buildings, if you will, that were creating, that, that provided some population boost. Uh, these are what the, whoops, these are what they are. Um, you get 90, you get more at level two. Let me jump back up here. Yeah, you get 140 at level two and so on. This is helpful. You're, you're giving up some real estate for this building, but it kind of gives you a twofold of both population as well as the goods. Uh, the goods is kind of really the big gain on this. Well, the boost, the population boost could be as well. At certain points, if you get pinched on uh, population where you need more, but you don't have any room to place more uh, residential buildings. Um, that population will hit your happiness, though, just like any other, uh, because it's all part of the same population calculation. So uh, that said, um, you place this, you get your 90 population added, and then you also get the boost of the six goods. Now, speaking for the goods, the goods are going to be six of a one of the age-specific of whatever your current age goods are. In this case, you place this as bronze, you may get six you may get six stone, lumber, marble, dye, or wine. Uh, it's just random. Each day you will get six of something when you collect. Uh, let's say you move up to Iron Age, it will give you six of Iron Age, whatever your current age is. It will give you that as part of the collection. It's just kind of random, which is nice. And the biggest advantage of that is that's not plunderable. So that's a problem. Uh, you'll see quite frequently in bronze and iron and maybe even a little bit beyond that where you'll get the you'll be having some goods production going on and you'll be running them on an eight hour cycle and people will plunder you they will attack you and and basically plunder your uh, production before you can collect uh, so not only did you waste the money you wasted the time this is just a six you know six collection every day that's protected from that so that's really one of the big advantages here it always helps in any era, really, to have just an ongoing 
um, goods production just grinding away in the background. So you start to get the level up and it'll pick up a little bit. It doesn't give you crazy numbers. It's more about the population boost. As you move up through these levels, it gives you an extra one. But once you get up there, you know, let's say you get up to level five. Um, yeah, level five, you're sitting at 10. So basically that's pretty decent. That's an eight hour production a day, just grinding. It doesn't cost you anything and it's protected. So, and then obviously you get up to level 10, you get 15. So that's what an eight hour and a four hour. So it's basically half the day's worth of production in a building that wouldn't quite take up the same footprint, but still it's pretty good. Um, let's see from modern era on, it produces double the unrefined goods for whatever, uh, would be appropriate for that era. So, um, that's something I'm not going to talk about right now because I'm talking about bronze era. Uh, scroll on down here a little bit. I didn't show this on the others, but to talk about the contribution rewards for people that contribute. I mentioned these are nice buildings to be running through the guild swaps or the guild FP swaps. Um, so people can contribute and they can get the opportunity to get some reward back. So they can get some FPs, they can get some blueprints and so on. You see where they're at level wise. Um, so doesn't pay crazy but it you know it kind of kind of gives some advantage level one once you get to level two you start to give um, some opportunity to get a blueprint for level one uh, starting at level two level one I haven't spoken to this yet but uh, level one uh, I don't think until you get to the really higher level buildings I don't maybe not even then I don't think you get a, a blueprint as part of a level one reward I think you have to be level two, and then it starts to unlock the blueprint piece of that. So in this example, let's speak to this real quick. Uh, level one, whoever your top contributor is, they will get five forge points. And then if they had a, like an, any other type of arc boost or whatever, they'll get that on top of it. So they'll get five FPs plus four medals. Um, level two, top spot will get 10 forge points, uh, seven medals plus one blueprint. Second place will get five and four and so on. And then as the levels go up, you'll start to see, like here at level three, positions one, two, and three play, pay a blueprint. So, And that's one way to help get those blueprints, because otherwise you're going to get these from Motivate and Polishing, random blueprint awards. Um, so that's where you start looking for, looking for your neighbors and looking for people in your guild that have these if you're looking to build. This is where you start to look to be in the money or, you know, in a paying position so that you can get the uh, blueprints. That's a good way to get those blueprints. Again, I talk about my uh, FP swaps. That's one of the biggest advantages. It's not necessarily about the FPs. It can be about the blueprints because that's that's one of the best ways to get blueprints. You can randomly get a blueprint here and there from, from pol polishing or motivating somebody's buildings, but... Uh, they're fewer and far between. It's a lot more predictable if you can do it through an FP swap or, uh, you know, whatever. So, again, these are my thoughts and um, just kind of the way that I approach the game. Um, everybody's different. If you have any differing opinions or any questions about any of this, go please leave them below. Um, or if you have any you know, suggestions that you, the ways you like to approach it, please do that as well. So, and again, um, if, if, if you're willing to, it'd be great to add to the community and create a video to kind of speak to your approach to the game. That'd be great. Um, so that's all I've got for this one. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them below. I thank you for watching and stay tuned because I've got other great buildings coming. As you can tell, I'm working my way through the eras. Thanks. Bye.